Hey there, YouTube. Uh, decided to change the front tires on my Coyote CS2410. Just wanted to put out a few pointers to you guys. If you're like myself, I've only changed car tires. It's the first time changing a tractor tire. Um, I just recently did, did a uh, built a garage where I tore down an old house, and I used this thing to help me so the excavation, dealing with some of the old material. And I ran over a lot of nails, so uh, I promised myself when that job was over I'd treat myself to a couple new tires as needed, so I need two new front tires. But uh, again, I was learning experience, got on YouTube, and as usual, uh, little to no uh, video showing you how to do this. Now this is a 2014 tractor, I bought in 2014, it's now 2018, this is Newfoundland, Canada. We do have a fair amount of salt and salty weather and salt water. But uh, this tractor doesn't see a lot of that, as I only just use it for personal use and clearing driveways, my own driveway, and a few friends' driveways and stuff. So it doesn't really see that much salt. And uh, so I really didn't have any trouble taking the tire off. Uh, I do have her up on a jack stand, so uh, just be aware of that. I don't ever trust hydraulics alone, um, not even for a split second. So let you know that. Anyway, this is the new tire. Uh, they were $129 each at the local store. Uh, they're a four ply. If I had my time back, I probably would have tried to see if I could get the Carlisles, which were six ply and online for uh, just a couple of dollars cheaper than this one. And, that, and that's with free shipping. So, But I didn't want to wait uh, for the sake of a couple of bucks. And uh, these tires, here's an old tire I took off. You can see there's a plug there and see I've already it's hard with the light here, but I've already used the slime in it. Yeah, you can see the slime there now. I used the slime in it. Uh, I mean, the treads are still good, but like I said, a plug there, plug there, there's a plug there. I mean, a lot of plugs in the sidewall. Got a lot of three and a half inch nails. And now it's at a point, even with the plugs and the slime, she's just a slow leak, and every, it's just a pain. Every couple of days having to try to, you know, pump this back up again or start out. Start out and think you're fine in the middle of a snowstorm and then all of a sudden you're, you're running around on a flat tire. So, a uh, couple of pointers. First of all, they don't have lug nuts, they have lug bolts. And uh, this being a Coyote, for some reason, they, uh, they don't use metric. Uh, or if they did, it's a 16 millimeter. 15 millimeters too small, 17 millimeters too big. So I ended up having to use a standard. Uh, five eight. So, uh, if you're looking for the for the front one, it's a five eight that goes on it, and I believe those are the 19 millimeters. I think fit the back, and uh, so that's one thing to be aware of uh, as they come out. You need a five eight uh, impact socket to take them off, or a regular socket. Uh, secondly. For those of us used to taking off car tires, we're used to the bead and the bead indent here being on the side with the valve. But as you can see with this one, if you're breaking down your tire, uh, the bead offset is actually on the inside. So uh, that was a little different too. I wasn't used to that. So if you, uh, you know, you got to break down both sides anyway. But uh, there's your valve side, and it's the thicker side. And uh, the rim's in pretty good shape, you know, for four years old here, uh, summer and winter. Uh, breaking it down wasn't too hard, although as you can see, I do have one of these Princess Auto jobbies. Uh, but this is for a 14 to 17 inch tire, so I couldn't really get it, get it fit under, but it won't go down over that platform, so I can't really attach it. Uh, with what I have there to try to, you know, get the break the tire down. So to break the tire down, once I broke the bead, which was pretty easy on that, usually I'll bolt this thing to the floor. I got underneath where my wife got her car parked now, I have four anchor bolts uh, drilled into the concrete floor that I'll usually mount this uh, with the four bolts into the floor to hold it for me when I'm usually doing car tires, when I do my own car tires. But uh, this one here, I just... Uh, I put it on the bead breaker. It wasn't that hard, um, but you know, it was much easier with the bead breaker. 
And then I just took it off with your regular assortment of a uh, couple of flat tops. And I did use the bar that comes with the bead breaker, but that just made it easier. Just a bigger crowbar and stuff we should be able to get it for you. But uh, since there's no videos on this online, I figured this might be just a couple of pointers for you to help you out. And uh, maybe make, when you go to change your tires, it might help a bit better. Talk to you later. And uh, one more thing I should point out is that these are rotational tires. So uh, these do rotate in a certain direction. So if you look on the side of your tire, at some point there, let's see if I can find it quick enough. It will tell you, there it is right there, uh, that tells you the direction of rotation. So on this side here, which most people call your driver's side, I suppose, in America, it would rotate like that there, so as it comes over the top, it spins, you follow your arrow. Alright, so when I mount it on the rim, you got to be careful you mount it on the right way as well. Chat later. And so again, uh, just out of habit, uh, just as a quick reminder, when you go to mount your tire back on, um, just out of habit, use the car rims, I just put the rim down, valve side up, and uh, not realizing that I should have... <laughs> Have to spin it over. So if you have to spin it over, remember that's your rotation. When you got it figured out, you know your tire rotates this way. So you also got to remember when you're mounting it to spin it over as well. Okay, before you try to mount it on. So I'm just going to lube this up with a bit of old lube, soapy water, and push it back on over the rim. Use my flat bar as my screwdriver to put it back on. So just remember. Uh, upside down so it could get a little bit tricky. You don't want to do this twice.